Hey everyone, in this video, I'm going to show you how to use the match EQ to unmask frequencies in instruments that are competing with each other, meaning that you have two or more instruments where they have a similar frequency range, and because they are masking each other with their similar frequency ranges, you're not getting the separation you want with those instruments. So I have a revised version of the project that I used in a previous video. This time around, I've added a piano part. Let's give this a listen as is. So the guitar and piano are competing a little bit. It's in no way like really bad or anything, but we want to apply some just gentle unmasking of the piano frequencies in the guitar part. So we're gonna make sure that the frequencies of these two instruments aren't competing with each other as much. And to do this, at least for this example, I'm going to add the Match EQ plugin to the guitar track. And then what we're gonna do is learn the frequencies of the piano track as a reference and apply that inversely to the EQ of the guitar. So the Match EQ is just in the same folder as all of your other EQs. And I'm applying it as the last plugin in the signal chain. But depending on your purpose, it really could go anywhere. So what I'm going to do is turn this on. And there's three different sections here. The current, which is going to learn the frequency response or frequency spectrum of the guitar. The reference, which is going to learn the frequency spectrum of the piano. And then Match EQ will create an EQ curve that can either match these two frequency responses or apply an inverse frequency response in order to unmask certain frequencies. So let's go to current, let's click learn, and then just play through the guitar part. Okay, so that's the frequency spectrum of the guitar part. Next, what I'll do is go over to the reference and then go up to sidechain and select the piano track. And so what this is gonna do is it's going to input the signal of the piano track into Match EQ just temporarily so that we can learn its frequency response. So we'll just click learn and hit play. Okay, so we've learned the frequency spectrum of the piano and of the guitar. And by the way, in all honesty, you don't have to use the sidechain input for your reference. You can actually just put the match EQ on the first track, learn the current, move it over to another track, learn the reference, and then you can move it back. But I find this way a little bit easier. It just skips that one step. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is go to the EQ curve and click match. Now, what this is really doing is this is applying a positive EQ curve to the guitar. So actually what we're doing here is we're making the guitar sound more like the frequency spectrum of the piano, which is not necessarily what we want. That's the opposite of what we want. Now there are applications for this when you need to match the tone of two different tracks or two different recordings. So it can certainly help out there. But what we really want here is we want to apply this inversely. So frequencies that were a bit more prevalent in the piano were actually carving out here in the guitar and then accenting the guitar's natural frequencies that are different from the piano. Typically, I like to unlink the left and right channels a bit, and I don't like this like super smooth. I actually find it sounds a little bit better when you uh, use it less smooth. It just gives you more frequency variation in here. And you don't need to go crazy with this. You know, you can actually destroy the tone of the instrument you're using this on if you use it uh, too aggressively. But a little bit of this unmasking won't hurt.
So you can hear when I bypassed the match EQ, the guitar and piano are really competing with each other. But when I bring the match EQ in, even just applying a little bit of this unmasking, the guitar kind of has its own frequency range now and sounds a little bit more distinct from the piano. It's a subtle difference, but it's a noticeable difference. And you can use this same technique for really any instrument. If you have a vocal that's buried in a dense mix, you could apply this to some of your instruments to get the vocal frequencies out of the way so that the vocal and the instrumental aren't masking each other. Or if you have like a solo and a rhythm part and the solo's not coming through very well because the solo and rhythm tones are very similar, you can do the same thing. So there's a lot of applications for the Match EQ plugin. Let's give this one more listen with everything back in. And there you go, that's how you can use the Match EQ to unmask frequencies in competing instruments in your mix. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to see more content like this. As always, thank you so much for the support and thanks for watching.